What's going on guys? Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. This is my third and final part on my How to Sound Mod series. And today, basically, we're just going to be covering the exterior samples, the distance samples, the event kill and angles, and anything else that I need to edit. Probably the horn, the um, traction sounds, the turbo sounds, and all that. So let's get started. So I hit record as I finished doing the idle sound, the limiter sound, the decel sound, and the fart sound. And the reason I did that is because it's the same thing as doing interior sounds. It's just that you're doing the outside sounds now. The only thing different from doing the interior sounds as opposed to the outside sounds is the distance and the event cone angle. So I'm not going to be talking too much throughout this whole segment right here just because we've already done this in the last video and the last video before that. And so we're just going to do this S55 low RPM exterior sound. Notice how it gets louder there? I'm gonna show you what you wanna do when you come to that. So the general idea here is that if one sample sounds different from start to end, like this, it gets louder like that, or tone changes or whatever. I usually just split it apart like that. I take the first part without the rasp and then the second part will come after. It's a really nice sample. done when you're done with the first section just control Z keep doing it until you have the whole thing again and then you simply just cut out the first part since you already did that and then just just do the rest <laughs> So let's see here. We're gonna plug in our first part, which is this one, or no, 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 this one. Basically, the sample before becomes super raspy. Sounds 
sounds about 3.6. the lower end a little too far so I put it back and we're just gonna try to transition it separate track for this I don't know but we'll see how it sounds right now okay, maybe that transition is a little too sudden so we're just gonna stretch it there you go It sounds good only up till 5.6 thousand, so we're just gonna leave it at that. So we're gonna need a backup sample since you can hear those cutoffs. And we're gonna put in this one that I already have um, under it. Make it just make a new track if you don't have it to basically hide the little pops audio pops in the uh, first track. Yeah, I guess. I guess that sounds good. What about this one? You know, I'm kind of dumb. That's the limiter. Just gonna, gonna leave it there. Jeez. This is the sound I'm looking for. Seems to hang around 5.1, so we'll put it right there. transition from being super quiet to normal levels. Yeah. I don't like how S55 sound, especially like this, but you know, this is what it sounds like. So, low RPM's been taken care of, the mid RPM's been taken care of, and I guess we could get to the high RPM's now. Oh yeah, I forgot one more thing. Um, you have to take care of that rasp and the volume changes. 
So we're going to edit the volume values a little bit on both the uh, first track, which houses the main samples, and the second track, which houses the backup ones. So let's see here. Let's make the max around. It's a little quieter. Yeah, there you go. That. Then let's see here. What do I want to make this? We'll try to shoot for three decibels. Three decibels sounds about right. But when the rasp comes in around here, we're just gonna mess with this a little bit, the transition levels, and then obviously these. We're gonna make it a little louder. We're gonna shoot for three, four, one, see how that sounds. <laughs> makes the sound louder so <gasps> pull that down a little bit pull it back down to four or three whatever Sounds about right. Right now we can look for high RPM samples. This video is really nice. It has low RPM samples, mids, and highs too. So this is perfect. I just found a high RPM sample. Let's go ahead and record it. Yeah, but I used a different video for D cell. This has a lot of wind noise, but anyway, we got our acceleration sample. Let's cut everything out. See how it sounds now.
I said we have to make it as short as possible. To around 50% because usually the throttle farts, the long ones, at least are around 50 to 75% throttle. Yeah, this sounds horrible at high RPM, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna do that. We still have to do the burbles and the launch control sounds, which is right here. So we're going to start with the launch control sounds because that one's the easiest. I'll get to that right now. do here for launch control like I did last time reverse it and basically delete the start of it and make it as long as you want preferably around 10 seconds is pretty it's pretty good because you shouldn't even be staying on launch control that long anyway This is kind of a scuffed launch control sound, we're still going to use it. Especially when it reverses, I don't know why it does that. But we're going to do it anyway. Alright, so what we're going to do here... Loop it. We're going to keep the volume profile that it has right now. And set the time to zero. Add throttle and make sure it only responds when you're at 99 to 100% throttle. Maybe adjust the 
EQ a little bit. <laughs> Check for the interior, see what the RPM is at for that. Looks to be around 20 to 3000. So we're gonna do the same thing for the exterior. I can't find it, oh here. 28 to 3000. Around that. Got the volume profile a little bit. added our launch control sound make sure your like last time make sure your throttle profile or condition is set to 99 to 100 percent there's a brown a 600 millisecond delay or however you want it for me i prefer 600 milliseconds and then make sure it's short in the track and then just play it <laughs> So we're done with the launch control. Let's set up the burbles. Low, mid, low, high. Alright, now that we got that, we're gonna try to organize them here. What you wanna do for burbles is throttle, but um, this little arrow right here, plus sign, throttle. Then make sure it's at zero, zero percent throttle condition, so it doesn't activate while you're accelerating. And don't loop it. And where's the low one? Oh here. And we're just gonna layer them on top of each other with transitions and everything until we reach. What is it? Seven? Yeah, let's aim for 7200. Make sure they're at zero. You can do this uh, throttle condition, or you can also go to the throttle throttle tab and mess with the volumes. You can do both or you can do just the conditions, but it really doesn't matter. So now let's see how it sounds. <laughs> the burbles we're done with the launch control we're done with the acceleration sound we're done with the throttle farts we're done with the decel sounds a few moments later at this point we've covered everything that we learned the last two episodes and now it's time to cover the distance sounds the event cone angle sounds and the turbo sound so this is all new to you guys i haven't taught you guys yet so let's get started now that we're getting into the distance sounds the first thing you need to do is take preferably an acceleration sound but you could take any track you want honestly i'm just going to be doing the acceleration sound first but yeah i already made a copy for myself it's called rear load far you can copy these um volume profiles if you want these are as best as i can get them yep so just pause the video if you want to copy the settings Okay, now we just need to, it's the same thing as doing regular acceleration sound. So let's just go find a far sound of an M3, M4, or M2 comp. Alright, so we found our first distance sound. Let's go ahead and record it.
trim off a second of this. It's not a big deal. Just because it's more constant with the rest of the, the sample. Like I said, you don't have to be too detailed on the distant sounds. If you want, you can, but like, I don't usually go super detailed on this. Into the RPM tab, put it in the rear load far or the new track you just created. And let's see what pitch this is. It sounds about 5.5 to me, so let's just pitch it at that. Really, the most important, important part about doing distance sounds is just the volume settings you have for the uh, distance tab, maybe the throttle tab, and the just yeah, just the volumes really. And you see, it's not going to activate at zero, so let's slowly up the distance. Why is it not playing? So dumb. Yeah, make sure. I don't know why, but F mod automatically sets your event cone angle to 180. Make sure you're at zero if you're doing the rear distance sounds or the distance sounds behind the car. sound mod to be honest you don't have to mess with the distance um, sounds for all the normal samples because usually I'd have to let's see in my old twin turbo guard of sound mod I had to do this yeah I had to do something like that where I had to match the well I guess sort of match the normal sample volume in the distance tab to the rear distance sound but for this one it sounds all right but just in case you know it needs fixing you can always copy my settings maybe I'll move it just a tiny bit like that maybe you can copy that but for this sound mod it sounds completely fine so I'm gonna leave it as is and if 
if I'm honest with you, it goes perfect with the normal sample still in the background a little bit. So yeah, we're gonna leave it at that. Maybe we can stretch it out a little bit. I don't really care about the details for this one, like I said, so. Sounds good enough to me. And that's how to do distance sounds. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't really, you don't really hear anything when a car is decelerating, especially the S55. You don't really hear anything when it's decelerating, especially when it's far away from you. So let's hear, let's see here. Let's make a copy of the decel sound. And call it rear off. Far. And distance. We're gonna do that. I'm, I'm so dumped, my bad. We're gonna do that. And then leave it at this. So for this one. make it so it's louder than the normal sound so let's stretch it up a bit to like I don't know five and this one this is where low pass comes in handy you can make it sound more muffled make it a tiny bit louder We'll even do one for the idle as well. Copy that. And we're gonna call it rear off idle. Yep, there you go. And we're gonna copy the distance. Yep. sound muffled That's it for the distance sounds. Should be good enough. And the fence came on at the middle of it so we're gonna remove all the rest of it Just like any other sample we're putting in, we're gonna put it in the RPM tab. 
well except the distance tab i think we, no we didn't put something in there but yeah just like any other sample we put in here we're going to put it in the rpm tab so just create a new track i already created mine it's called engine bay off we're gonna put the idle in here basically when you mess with the event cone angle uh, dial up here should play the front engine bay sound let's make it a little louder actually just a tiny bit louder maybe that's too loud good and create another engine bay track for the acceleration samples so two things I created two engine bay samples those are going to be the close range event cone angle sounds and these ones I made here front load and front off those are for the far distance sounds just a little side note in case you were confused <laughs> This is important you're gonna have to copy the distance sounds volume profile on the distance tab for these tracks right here pause the video if you want and then the event cone angle this is important too yep and basically what I did I don't know how much you guys missed but I recorded some engine based samples just put my samples in I put it in like any other sample and like I said in the last sample that we put in for a distance sound it doesn't have to be too high quality just as long as you can tell that it's a flyby sound or a distance sound let's hear a sample sound more like a diesel sound since it this since it's the same sample yep there we go And if you guys want, 
these are the recommended flyby front samples the volume profile that I use for the throttle tab here's the volume profiles for the for the RPM tab right there there distance volume profile right here and event cone angle volume profile right there so basically you have to co coordinate all these volumes in all four tabs and make sure they sound good that's a lot to take care of but we're done with that so for the turbo sounds I did get some Forza turbo samples because they recorded it right from the turbo in the M4 GTS let's have a listen Now the turbo, the way to set up the turbo is really confusing in FMOD when I first started. But it became easier over time, but I can see how it's still confusing to some people. So if you guys want to copy my volume profiles right there. And all you have to do really is take the sample, put it in here, set it to a random root pitch, whatever sounds best to you mess with the volumes and all that and then you get this it goes along with the turbo boost depending on your car's max boost or wastegate in the engine 99 of the car that you're doing in the data folder it depends on when the blow off valve will activate so this one will activate it at 0.95 bar but to be honest, for the car that you're doing, I'd recommend checking the NGNI and the wastegate to see what it's at. And I think for the F80, let's go check the F80. Somewhere in here, yep. So for the F80, the wastegate is at, looks like, or the max boost, I mean, the max boost. It's so at 1.35 for the first turbo, the second turbo is 0 0.98. Okay, perfect. So this works perfectly with the with the F80. And so the for the blow off valve, I've already had this in here since the M5 since I started the M2 sound. I basically just copied that over from there and for the blow off valve sound it's it was confusing for me at first but I got it now you have to set the turbo boost not at the end but somewhere near it like that 0.95 so that I can trigger an F mod like that you can even copy my volume profile if you want other than that, it's pretty simple. That's all there is to it. But for this Forza Turbo sample, or the samples, I should say, it came with multiple different blow -off valve designations. So if you notice the name here, it says 050. That basically means you should set it. It was originally set at 0.5 bar, to my understanding, or 50%. But to me, you're supposed to stack but to me the boost doesn't really matter the bar the bar level doesn't really matter what matters is how you stack the tracks and the samples for the blow for the blow valve together and as you can see it's like a it's like a backwards staircase all volume profiles are the same and what that does basically is that when you're at, you know, let's say 0.2 bar, let's say you're at 0.2 bar, or actually no, let's say you're at 0.45 bar, the lower blow off valve sound should play, which you can barely hear. If you go to 55, it'll play the other blow off valve meant for that, or the other sample meant for the second to lowest boost level 
when you get up top. Yep. And basically when you're at full boost and let off, it's going to play all of these in sync. In sync to each other. It still sounds like a blow off valve, so consider these as like stages to your blow off valve when it activates. It's very confusing, but I hope this at least gives you some insight to this. Oh yeah, by the way, you should be doing all this in the boost tab, but I've heard in some cases you need to use the blow off valve tab, which I don't use. I don't know why I have it here. It's pretty useless because it's the exact same thing as a boost except the volume profiles because I wanted to keep it quiet because obviously like I said it's useless right now I don't know what the blow off valve tab is for people have been saying to me to just use the boost tab so yeah because I've also apparently heard that the BOV tab is pretty much the same as the boost tab I don't know if that's true or not but this is how I do my stuff right here but yeah that's the turbo sound. I hope I went over it well. If not, leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer your question. Because I know this is hard to explain and very confusing. And I'm very bad at explaining stuff. But that's the best I could do. <laughs> Alright, the very, very last thing we're going to tackle in this episode. In this very long episode. Look what time it is and look what time I started. It's 9.30pm. But anyway, let's tackle the last bit. For this sound mod hopefully it sounds good when you get in game but who knows to reverse this like a normal acceleration sample that's how kuno's traction control sounds are too so we put it back into audition not perfect but we'll still loop it i'm gonna aim for about five seconds yep way more than five seconds That's the longest traction control sound I could find, so if it doesn't sound good, then it's whatever at this point. I don't think a Seto does traction traction control sounds that long anyway. When you're on throttle in-game and it comes on, it only comes on for a split second, then it's gone. So there shouldn't be too much of a worry. This one. My F5 did not just crash. There's no, it, it did crash. Oh, you gotta be joking. What was saved? Oh my god, you gotta be f The next day. Alright, so we put our traction control sample in there. Mess with the timing of it. Sounds about right. And that's all there is to it to traction control. It's the same thing for the interior. I just made an interior sample of it somewhere. Yep, done with that. And uh, 
yeah, I'm gonna have to reconstruct this again. So if you guys don't see a video from me next time, you probably know why. Um, yeah, that's at least three hours of work going. <sighs> Cut to the end of the video where the sound is actually in game. Good night.